Hey everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. In today's video, I will be reacting to 23andMe results, my dad's paternal haplogroup results, and GEDmatch. And this is another one from Allison Rice. Uh, I, saw her, uh, I saw her reaction to when she got her 23andMe results originally, and then we saw her reaction with her uh, mom's results. It was her, her mom, and uh, her sister, and uh, she also compared her sister's results to her mom's and hers, and now we're going to get her dad's results. So I'm very interested to see, um, especially because she had a bunch of trace results in her 23andMe results and her sister's ancestry results that were indicating some South Asian. Uh, she had indicated that she thought that her father had Asian features in her first video, and, um, I mean, personally, I think he kind of does. It's, you know, it's hard to tell, though, with features. They could be coming from any sorts of places. But uh, being that we saw her mom's um, uh, results, which were 95% African, um, it, it'll be interesting to see how African her father's results are. So uh, before we jump into the video, please be sure to give this a like. It really helps me out in the algorithm. And also be sure to subscribe and click that bell so that you get notifications on future videos. But let's go ahead now and just jump right on in. Hey, this is Ali, and I'm here with my dad, Nathan. Hi. <laughs> so in the past, you've seen the DNA results for me. Yep. You've also seen the DNA results of my sister, Tiffany, my boyfriend, Nigel, now we didn't my mom, Max Okay, we didn't see her sister Tiffany's results, although we saw her results with the mom. And we did not see the, uh, did she just say her boyfriend, I think it was? The DNA results of my sister Tiffany, my boyfriend Nigel. Yeah, I didn't see Nigel. Myself, I'll have to see that. My cousin Samara. And now oh, I didn't see the results. Wow, she's, she's doing it the way that genealogists do it. And she did say she's been doing genealogy research since 2009, I think she said. We test everybody because the best way to do these results is to test everybody then you can start triangulating matches so if i have a match who's matching me and a second cousin of mine then it's very likely that that match is going to be related to us through our shared ancestry and a second cousin shares great grandparents with you so that you you know now you know to look at specific great grandparents families to then find this other person so that's kind of, uh, that, that's why we try to test everybody. Um, and uh, so that, that's pretty cool. I, I, she's gone into her genetic matches with the other, with some of the other videos. So she'll, I'm hoping she'll do that with this one too. Nathan, daddy, tell everybody where you're from. Well, I'm from Trinidad and West Indies. Dad's parents was born in Trinidad as well. And they go back, I believe two generations until they go back to Barbados. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. So let's get to his results because we're excited. We haven't seen it before. So let's get to the results. Okay. All right. So these are your results right here. It says that you're, whoa, you're 85.6% African. That's good. <laughs> and from that, you're 81.1% West African. Now, I do want to point out this video is from May of 2017, so it's a year after her uh, receiving her results from 23andMe and about four months after her receiving her mom's results from Ancestry. So, curious, I've said this in the other videos, I'm curious to see if she will show if her uh, results have changed at all, um, just because I'm pretty sure within that time period of her receiving her results, and her dad's results, 23andMe probably had an update. You're 2.7% Central and South African. And you're 1.8% broadly, broadly Sub-Saharan African. So 81.1% is West African, which makes sense because, you know, um, people that were stolen from Africa and yeah. taken to the Western world were from West Africa. So, yeah, so, so that makes sense. Whoa, Daddy, you're 12.9% European. Oh, that's good. So British and Irish, probably twelve point nine percent. Which is what she had. She had, if I remember correctly, that's what she had as well. She had mostly British and Irish, 
broadly Northwestern European. And then I, I see for his, he has Southern European and then they specifically say Iberian and then broadly Southern European. If I remember correctly, hers just said broadly Southern European. And then she also had broadly European, which he has as well. Wow. Not the white in me. <laughs> so 12.9% European. Wow. Okay. So 8.9% of that is North Northwestern European. And that is more like British, yeah. Irish, and, and stuff like that. And British, Irish, and then Western Europe areas. So you're looking at, you know... Uh, France, Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, uh, the Scandinavian countries. So you know Norway, Sweden. Uh, so the, the, it's it's not all of Europe, but you're looking at a huge chunk of Europe in that. Wow, you're one point eight percent Southern European. So that's Spanish. That's um, yeah, that's Spain, Italy, like those places. Yeah. So. 1% of that and, is and sort of Mediterranean areas, too, are kind of part of that. So, you know, Greece, um, Turkey, sort of, you know, getting into that. Iberian. The Iberian Peninsula is Spain and Portugal. And you're 2.1% broadly European. Wow. You're 0.7% South Asia. Okay, so this was something I was interested in finding out because she had received 0.1%. So if it is true, it's obviously coming from her dad's side. Uh, based on how the admixtures are coming out, it would seem to indicate that there is a little bit more reliability to that South Asian than, you know, what her 0.1% really indicated. But he's still at 0.7%. So this could be some sort of misread of some sort. It could be uh, some sort of noise. Um, there's, there's a couple different possibilities going on. But... Um, you know, she received it. Her dad has the South Asian, her sister who tested on ancestry. They're also detecting South Asian. And you're also looking at Asian versus other, you know, uh, not other Asian countries mostly, but, uh, against Europe and Africa. So other continents. So, you know, if they, if they did, uh, look into their ancestry, if this is true, you know, going back to probably his fourth their fifth great grandparents you may find someone who has you know almost fully south asian ancestry so that's pretty that interesting is, that is india. india yeah that is um india, india pakistan, pakistan afghanistan, afghanistan yeah. Bangladesh, those areas. oh she's reading <laughs> wow, 0.7 percent and then you're 0.5 percent east asian and native american east 0.4 percent southeast asian that is china southwest asia um and then places like burma indonesian and less than 0.1 percent native american so you have uh, just a little bit they are guessing you have a tiny little bit of native native caribbean your hopper group is basically the path that you're wow Wow, the path that your 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 mother's 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 mm -hmm. mother's your father's father's father. So we're gonna look at that. So your maternal haplogroup group is L one B one A, and that is your mother's your mother's line. Mm -hmm. So let's see let's see more about that. Okay, so L one B one A. This is L one B one A is found mostly exclusively in Ethiopia and Sudan, who also have that gene that Nigerians and, and people from Guinea. L one B one A is the only branch of L one B that extended to Northeast Africa. It appears to have arrived in Northeast Africa about fifteen thousand hmm. years ago. So that is your mother's lineage. Okay. So your father's side, your paternal side, it's E dash M four two five four. So it's predominant in Africa, south of the Sahara Desert. It's more of a generalized result that they show you for the for the paternal side. Yeah, well, I mean, both of them are kind of generalized, just, you know. But if you do the family tree DNA, mitochondrial DNA test, or the family tree DNA Y DNA test, you're going to get, uh, well, depending, but you're, gonna, you're going to get um, better results. Biggest thing being that with family tree DNA, you actually get your genetic matches and not just your haplogroup, you know, which haplogroups are interesting, but genealogically speaking, um, you, there's not usually a lot that most people can do with them unless you have your paternal ancestral line or your maternal ancestral line traced hundreds of years back. 
you know, you, it's really going to be something more of just being interesting than actually useful. So, but you know, it can be, they use mitochondrial DNA to, uh, identify the remains of, um, of, uh, got you what, King Richard the third. So yeah, so they use mitochondrial DNA to identify King Richard the third and, you know, so yeah, it's, it can be useful. And that group of men that has passed out in the same gene, it's 17,000 years. 17,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so, uh, no. <laughs> okay, so let's go down to my ancestry timeline. They asked me how many generations ago was your most recent ancestor for each population. So my most recent West African ancestor is one generation ago. The last Spanish ancestor I had was at least five generations ago from the 1830s. Um, the last British and Irish ancestor I had was in the 1830s. Five she keeps saying that she had. This is to her father. and This is also an inference that has, that this is overly simplified in my opinion. Um, but a lot of things with these tests are done that way so that the you know, the layman, most people who buy this can understand it in a way. And while this has, you know, it has validity to it, the way that it's set up, you know, it, it makes it seem, you know, someone like her, she may read it and go, oh, okay, well, then I have a South Asian ancestor who was, you know, born 1830 or so, you know, that's not necessarily the case. You have a Southeast, you have someone who may be South Asian ancestor who was born between 1830 or 1710 so between 1710 and 1830 and technically it could be even farther because the way they're estimating this if you look it goes one generation so one generation two generations three generations four generations and it's 30 years a generation well not everyone's having kids at 30 could be younger could be older you know there are some men who have you know kids into their 50s and 60s and even into their 70s you could have it where, you know, instead of six generations back being 1800, six generations back could actually be the 1700s. You know, six generations back could even be the 1600s. I mean, you have uh, you have all sorts of possibilities when it comes to the, the differences in generations. So, you know, it could even be that, you know, it's it's close it, it or it could even be that there were shorter generations. So, you know, it could be that six generations back was actually in the 1850s. So, yeah. There, there's a lot of stuff with these. And, and there is a thing down below. Learn more about how to interpret these results. And I imagine it goes into a good amount of what I'm basically saying. That, you know, these are estimations. They're hypothesized. And here's some of the information on how we reach those hypotheses. Um, you can look into the, the white papers that the companies have. What a white paper is, is basically it's an explanation of how they're getting the results that they're giving to you. Um, it's not going to define exactly saying, you know, you have this and this, you know, it's going to give a generalized of this is how we do all tests. And here's the information that goes along with that. So, it, it, yeah, it's, it's interesting looking at these kinds of charts, but take it with a grain of salt, just like the admixture. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. I will see you in my next video.